Hi, today I will show you how you can add legacy interrupt support for our QMU emulated PCI Echo device and how you can use legacy interrupts in a Linux driver. Before we start, we have to take a look a little bit at the theory and the different interrupt mechanisms which are available on PCI and PCI Express. So let's go. The first interrupt method is the so-called legacy interrupt. On old PCI systems, this was a dedicated pin and it was available on each card and if a card wants to signalize an interrupt, it just pulls the interrupt line low and then the interrupt controller of the processor um, yeah, knows, okay, an interrupt is ongoing. When the interrupt was handled, then the interrupt line was released again, so the default state was high. So you can think of this just like a normal GPIO interrupt. It was possible to share the same interrupt lines for multiple cards. On PCI Express it's a little bit more complicated, but it's still you have one interrupt per card and the card can pull this interrupt low and this will trigger the interrupt at the processor. Then there are newer or yeah other implementations also available. One is the so-called MSI or message signal interrupt. So on a message signal interrupt, the PCI or PCI Express endpoint just performs an outbound transaction to the root complex to a specific address and this will trigger an interrupt at the root complex. So here the PCI card just writes to the address space of our processor to a specific address and this will trigger an interrupt. The big advantage of MSI is you can have up to 32 interrupts available with MSI. And PCI Express said, okay, 32 interrupts are not enough, we need more. So they came up with MSIX, so message signal interrupts extended. And the concept is just like MSI, you are just performing an outbound transaction to a specific address and this will trigger an interrupt. And with MSIX you can have up to 2048 interrupts. So today we will only take a look at the legacy interrupt mechanism. In a later video I also want to cover at least MSI and because MSIX is just the same but with more interrupts I don't think I have to cover this. But if you want me to do this, yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, enough for the theory, now let's start implementing something. So first I will navigate into my QMU folder and let me open up the sources for our QMU emulated PCI device. I can find this under hardware misc um, PCI echo device.c and if I take a look at the realize function here, um, this was a copy paste error, so I already have everything I need to use the interrupt pin inside this code. So with this function PCI config set interrupt pin, we're adding an uh, interrupt to our PCI configuration and we have this pin available. Now the only thing which is left for us to do is, is to trigger the interrupt. Therefore, let me jump to the right callback of bar zero. Here we go. And so bar zero has various registers and one is the interrupt register. And currently we can't write to this or a write won't do anything. But now let's change this. So in case we are writing to the IRQ register, I will check if the if bit one is set in the value we want to write and if so I will call the function PCI set IRQ and this will yeah trigger an interrupt. I have to name the device which should generate the interrupt and I have to set the state of the pin so one means interrupt is triggered. Let me copy these two lines. In case bit 2 is set, then we will reset the interrupt. And no matter what happens, we will save the value here so, it's, so we can read, read it back later. And that's basically it. Okay, then let me go to the build folder and let me try to rebuild QMU. This shouldn't take too long.
Yes, done. And now we can add support for the interrupt in our driver. Okay, so first I have to navigate to the folder in which I have the driver. And let's open up the driver. So, let's see. Okay, here we are. So in the probe function, or first let's maybe start with the interrupt handler routine. So whenever an interrupt is triggered, it will jump to a specific callback function, which we can define. So let's do this. The return value of this function has to be irq return t, and I will call it echo irq handler. It has the following arguments. The first is the interrupt number, from the because you can use the same interrupt handler for multiple interrupts, and over the interrupt number you can decide which interrupt was triggered. And the second one is an optional data field, which we will be using. And I will pass um, a pointer to our struct echo dev object um, as this data here. So I will declare a pointer from the type struct echo dev, I will call echo, and this is just um, our converted data here. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is we will read from the interrupt register at bar zero to see which kind of interrupt this is. Currently we just have the legacy interrupt available, but later we also want to support MSI. So let's read this with IO read 32 and I want to read from echo pointer bar zero plus eight, which is the offset of our, yes, which is the offset of our interrupt. Um, register and in case we have a one here we know it's a legacy interrupt so let's print out a small message to the kernels lock legacy irq triggered and in order to clear the interrupt i have to perform a write operation to this register here And that should be it. And to indicate we are handled every IRQ successfully, I will return IRQ handled. Maybe I have to double check, but I think it should be IRQ handled. Okay, so now we have our interrupt service routine. Now let's implement or let's yeah request the interrupt and search which interrupts are available on our card. So here I'm in the probe function. And here at the end, I will add some code to search for the interrupt. So first, so in order to check which interrupts are available, we can use the function PCI alloc IRQ vectors. And this function takes the following argument. The first one is a pointer to our PCI device, which we want to search for interrupts. Then we have a minimum value of IRQs and a maximum value of IRQs. And in case um, these limits are exceeded, we will get an error code here in our return value. But on my call currently I only have the legacy interrupt available, so I will set both to 1. And then I can tell the function which types of interrupts I'm interested in. And if I'm writing all types, it will search for normal interrupts, for legacy interrupts, for MSI and MSIX interrupts. If I just want to search for Legacy interrupts, for example, I would write PCI RQ legacy or PCI RQ MSI or MSIX for MSI and MSIX interrupts. And in case the status is not equal to one, so this will return the number of vector interrupt vectors which are available and we expect one interrupt vector, which is the default um, legacy interrupt. In case it's not one error occurred, and I will just copy these lines here. Error. Um, IRQ, alloc, alloc, IRQ returned. And then I will print out the return value. Yes. And I will go here. Yeah, that's basically it. Good. So now we have found the available interrupts. So how can we request the interrupt and how can we link it to our um, yeah, interrupt handler function. 
So I will add a new variable here. I will call it interrupt number. And I will set this interrupt number to the corresponding interrupt number. So, and I get this number by using the function um, PCI, IRQ vector. I want it for my current PCI device and I want vector number zero, which is the interrupt found here. Maybe let's print out the interrupt number. IRQ number and this is IRQ number. Yeah, so here we go. And now we have to allocate or request the interrupt and we can do this with def m request irq. This is a managed function so we don't have to free the irq manually which is nice. The first argument is the device to which lifespan the um, request interrupt is performed. The second argument is the number of the interrupt we want to um, yeah, request. Then the next argument is the handler which should be called when the interrupt is triggered. Then we have some optional flags. I don't need any flags here so I will set it to zero. Um, then we have a name which will ap appear in um, proc interrupts I think. We can check this later. And the last argument is the data which should be passed to the interrupt handler routine. So this is just a pointer to our current um, echo device object basically. And in case status is not equal to zero, an error occurred and I will print out some error messages. So let me copy these four lines here. Um, requesting interrupt. And I don't need anything here. Okay. And we have allocated the interrupt vector. So the indie remove function, what I will do is I will just um, free the interrupt vectors with PCI free IRQ vectors. And here I just have to pass in the uh, pointer to our PCI device to free it. Okay, now we're already done, but the question is how can we trigger the interrupt? Well, if we want to trigger the interrupt, we have to write a one to pointer um, to bar zero offset eight. And therefore I will add a new switch case here. So in my IO control here, um, I will name it IRQ, this define I have will I will add later. And if I'm triggering this, all I have to do is I have to write a one to my interrupt register and this will set the interrupt. And then in the handler, I'm resetting the interrupt again. Okay, so let me open up um, the file in which I have all the commands available and here I will add a new one. I will call IRQ and this should be 15. Okay. What, what I want to check one thing. Yes, I have a return here, so everything's fine. Good. Okay, cool. So let's try to build um, the kernel module and let's see if I made some mistakes. Uh, I will write 32. <laughs> yes, warning, this may fall through. Yeah, let me troubleshoot this for a second. I'm back in a second. Okay, the error was easy. I just forgot this return zero here. And now if I try to build it again, it should compile without any errors. Yes, cool. Okay, so now the next step I have to do is I have to write um, or I have to change my bar zero test program in order to use the yeah, interrupt. And this is extremely simple. So let me copy these three lines here. Yes, so in case this is IRQ, I will just, I would, yeah. I can set this to null here and then it will, yeah. Let's write here, RQ was triggered. Okay, so that should be it. So I have to compile this, therefore I will need my cross compiler. 
then uh, my input file is bor 0 test.c and my output file should be in rootfs bor 0 test. Okay, I forgot to close a brace somewhere. Yep, here I should close the brace and anything else. And now it should I should be able to compile it. Done. Now I have to copy my kernels module into my root file system. Let's jump to the root file system and let's pack it. And then we can try out the program. Cool, so let me navigate into my QMU build and let's fire it up. So now I'm only using one equity wise, which is enough for today. So let's start the virtual machine. Okay, I will insert my kernels module. Um, Okay, so we can see we got one interrupt and this is interrupt number 36. And if we take a look at proc interrupts, we can see at 36. Yes, here we can see this label we've gave echo dev interrupt. Okay, next thing I will do is I will create a character device. I will name echo zero as a character device, major number 64, minor zero. And now if I'm doing a bar zero test, def echo one and then RQ, we can see, okay, we are performing this um, write command. Then we are, tr then we are, yeah, our interrupt service routine was triggered. We are first, before we're printing out, we are reading the register back and then we're writing a zero to it. This will clear the interrupt. And at the end we will see this IO control return zero IOQ was triggered. Okay, cool. So this is how to use legacy interrupts in a QMU emulated PCI device and how to write the driver for it. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymycoffee.com slash Johannes for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.